Well, hello, my beautiful YouTube family. Thank you for joining me for this series where we're going to be looking at the sun through all the signs and houses, looking at a sign and a house each week for the next 12 weeks. But before we get into this week's sign and house, what is the sun all about? Well, it's how we choose to build our kingdom in this earthly existence. For most people, this is usually done through a career and through some kind of worldly achievements. The sun represents that in a general sense in the horoscope. There are other factors that we look at as well when we're doing like a career reading or something like that, but the sun is always a key player. The sun is also how we choose to identify ourselves. You know, maybe if we have the sun in the sixth house, we will identify ourselves as a helper, somebody who fixes things, solves problems for others. Perhaps if we have the sun in the ninth house, we might identify ourselves as a wisdom giver, someone with a lot of knowledge. Maybe if we have the sun in the first house, we might see ourselves as something of a hero in the world, here to make a change, here to make a difference in the world. Remember though that these are stories that uh, are given to us by, let's say, our ego. The sun actually represents our ego. And so these can sometimes be stories that we buy into for ego identification as well. The sun ruling our identity and ruling our egoic self as well. Now the sun is also our self-confidence and so it's where we need to focus our energy in order to grow our self-confidence. For example, if you have the sun in the 11th house, that is saying that if you want to increase your self-confidence in the world, establish greater networks, build your friendship circles and you will grow your own personal self-confidence as well. You might even get a sense of self-confidence through being a great friend to somebody too. The sun is the natural ruler of the sign of Leo and they're a little bit the same in their energies in a sense. You know, they're both fun energies, they're both playful, they're both creative, they're both glamorous and it's all about being the best. Wherever Leo sits is all about where am I the king, the best. Where And the same with the sun. Where does the sun sit? It's all about being the best. It's all about shining brightly in the world. The sun is like a superstar energy. It's a diva kind of energy. The famous person, the king, the queen. It, you know, all of us have a little bit of solar energy going on. We've all got the sun, sun somewhere in the chart. Some, some people are expressing it right out there for the whole world to see. And some people are keeping their diva energy a bit to themselves, but it's still there. Everyone is a king or queen in their own way, in some realm in life. The sun is the reminder in the chart of our own superstar nature. And it also reminds us, well, at least I get reminded when I look at my son, that other people have a right to be a superstar too, to shine their light, to shine their energy in some way in the world. And I'm not here to usurp other people's right to be a king or queen in their own way, in their own manner. Um, I am only here to shine my light in the manner that I'm called to do so. The sun's placement also shows us, therefore, where we shine, you know. Um, for example, uh, sun in the sixth house might indicate you shine best by helping other people, by uh, fixing problems for other people, finding solutions in life for other people. The sun uh, in the second house might show that you, you can really shine in financial matters or in some sort of creation of self-sufficiency in some way. The sun in the 10th house obviously is a very strong place. The sun is at the highest point in the sky when the sun is in the 10th house and usually means you're born at midday. And there, therefore, when the sun is in the 10th house, we can shine in career. We can shine in worldly achievements, in our reputation. So that's the sun energy, a bit in a nutshell. It is the most creative planet. Now, no planet has exclusive rights to creativity, but when it comes to creative intelligence, the sun does uh, sort of have a leading role to play, obviously. It is the giver of vitality. If you think about as above, so below, the old hermetic principle, if we have no sun, we have no life. In the solar system we'll be sitting on earth it would be completely dark we wouldn't even be able to see the moon or the other planets or each other there would be no light no life nada nothing so the vitality that we experience comes from the sun 
our vitality as individuals is seen through the placement of the sun and its good or bad aspects in our natal chart. Again, as above, so below, the sun is illuminating, giving light as well as vitality and growth. It's giving light and it's giving illumination, as I said. So it is actually connected to our ability to see, literally and figuratively. And often people with, just a, a little tidbit for you, people with the sun in the first house in their childhood will often tend to need glasses or may have some sort of eye issue um, until they sort of come into their own in latter life and they may not need glasses when they're older. Uh, so to be able to see in the house of the body sun in the first house can sometimes indicate a need for glasses or that there are eye issues. Um, and hence I'm wearing my glasses for this series because I'm getting older and my eyes need a bit of support so hence glasses so the sun just to wrap up what it's all about is is also representative of fathers and father figures generally and their influence or no influence in our lives the sun in the 12th house may well represent that the sun um, the father figure in a person's life might have been absent or missing or not around very much or disengaged or something like that so in a nutshell, the sun is the symbol of the present you in this incarnation, the you and your role in this particular lifetime. How you envision yourself is the sun, how you identify yourself, what you aspire to be, your outer self, the self you give to the world and how you want others to see you. That is what the sun is all about. And I should also add, the sun rules the color gold. Hence, I've got my gold top on. So in this series, we're going to be, as I said, going through each sign and each house that corresponds to the sign and looking at the characteristics that the sun gives when it's in each of those placements, how we can shine, how we can generate our self-confidence in these areas of life. And without further ado, let's dive right in to our sun, house and sign placements. So this week we are looking at the sun in the sign of Virgo and also the sun in the sixth house. How do we work out what we've got? Well, obviously here in the astro wheel you can see here is the sun in the sign of Virgo. That's fairly straightforward. But to work out if you have the sun in the sixth house, you need to count six places, and we're using whole sign astrology here, six places from the rising sign. In this example, we're using Aries as our rising sign. So we count six. Aries is one, two, three, four, five, six, and there is the sun in our sixth house. Now, of course, you could have a different rising sign. It doesn't have to be Aries. You could have any rising sign. For example, you might have Pisces rising and six house placements from the sign of Pisces. Let's work it out. One, two, three, four, five, six is Leo. Leo would be your sixth house if Pisces was your rising sign. So that's all you've got to do to work out if you have the sun in the sixth house or the sun in this example in the sign of Virgo. So we'll begin by looking at the sun in the sign of Virgo and what it means. When we have the sun in the sign of Virgo, we get our identity from Virgo-like things, namely from our service of other people. We identify ourselves as a servant or a priestess or a priest to other people. The, the true essence, the true meaning of the word priest or priestess is to be in service to the rest of humanity. And so that might be our identity. We identify with service. The sun in this sign wants to be useful because Virgo is a very useful sign. And if you're not being of use to the world, it can take you into a state of sort of depression and you know feeling um, low self-esteem because the sun actually connects to our ego so if we're not being useful if we're not practically offering our talents and abilities to the world for use we feel let down in some way we also see a lot of Virgo Sun people becoming true workaholics like really giving it hundred and fifty percent and so be careful of that if you have the sun in Virgo that obviously you don't want to get burnt out but that can be often the case for sun in Virgo people there is this desire to shine in the field of service and also the field of work. And so we give it our all. 
Virgo is also the sign of people who are downtrodden, you know, the people who are disadvantaged, the the underdog in many cases. And with the sun here, we might identify with the underdog and, uh, and with people who are struggling in life. We might really get alongside them. It's quite a beautifully humble position for the sun to be in the sign of Virgo. Sun in Virgo people, they love to fix problems. They love to resolve the suffering of others. So if you're a sun in Virgo person, look for ways to serve, to help, to heal, to fix, and you will fulfill yourself and your ego needs quite strongly. In fact, because the sun is a planet of leadership, you might be quite brilliant at resolving problems for other people, at sorting out difficulties, at alleviating debt, at helping people overcome illnesses, and even directing that to your own life because the sun is vitality. Now the sun is a big planet, but Virgo is very detail oriented. So you as a leader, because the sun is leadership, will tend to exhibit the, this um, ability to handle big things uh, in the workplace. Virgo is our work, um, big things in the workplace, but being able to focus on the details that matter. So that's an advantage. It's also really good for behind the scenes. Virgo isn't a sign that's like, hey, look at me, here I am world. It's not that kind of energy. It's more um, serving behind the scenes. You're the practical organizer, the advice giver, the researcher, the somebody who is in the wings cheering the world on in, in many ways. Um, and so you, there's, there's a beautiful powerhouse here to serve from sort of behind the scenes, even though the sun is a very look at me planet. We know that the sun represents the father and when the sun is in the sign of Virgo, well, it can mean that the father is exactly what we've just described, a bit of a leader um, or a champion of the underdog, um, somebody who is a very hard worker. They really give it their all. Um, you know, they, they are good at resolving issues, resolving problems and balancing unfair situations might be part of their identity. I am a... a a harmony bringer so to speak or I fix people's problems might be how they identify themselves as a father. There is a shadow side also as well and um, this is the sign connected with ill health, um, imbalanced situations basically. So ill health, poverty um, and, and lack. So it's also possible that if you have the sun in Virgo your father might have struggled with those things in some way or another through no fault of his own just the energy of the wiring that he had he might potentially also be something of a critic or a perfectionist in life too so this is also a placement if you have this in your chart sun in virgo that you might be devoted to serving your father so you know your father might need you and you might really excel and shine at serving your father that's another combination that this placement brings. Let's move on now from exploring the sun in the sign of Virgo and focus our attention on the sun in the sixth house in whole sign astrology. Now we can see with the sun here, um, and we'll, we'll go straight to the father issues to begin with, with this one, um, that our father might have been from the lower levels of society, you know, some sort of victim in some way, or um, from a, a more poor background or a struggling background, um, some uh, disadvantage, some level of inequality might be a part of his, his background. Um, especially if the sun has difficult aspects or um, is in a weak sign in the sixth house. This sun in the sixth house can also indicate that your father might have been involved in the military uh, because the sixth house is connected to the military. He might also have been potentially have been a lawyer or um, in the, the highest manifestation, a champion of the underdog um, working in legal professions to alleviate disadvantage for other people. That's a very good manifestation of this energy obviously um, we might see that in a sign like um, for example a fire sign where the sun is very proactive and um, really energetic the father might have been a plumber might have been a problem solver debt collector might have been somebody who worked in sixth house environments now laboring roles are considered to be sixth house environments and for example, my, my son in whole sign astrology is in the sixth house. My father was a farmer um, and farming does have connections to the sixth house. So there is that laboring element to being a farmer. 
Let's move away from the father imagery now and focus on what the son in the sixth house means for us as individuals. Well, obviously, when we have the son in the sixth house, this is the realm of life where we can really shine, where we can come into our own and show our glory, so to speak. And here where is where we can make our own kingdom. We might be able to create our own kingdom in very contentious environments, in critical environments, in highly adversarial environments. Let me just say that being an astrologer, that is the case. And it does attract a lot of criticism from society to be an astrologer. Um, but hey, that's where I'm creating my kingdom. Now, if you have this placement in the sixth house, where are you creating your kingdom? Is there a lot of contention with what you do and the kingdom that you're creating yourself? The sun in the sixth house brings its creative intelligence to the sixth house realm. And so we can be very intelligent, very insightful about the problems of life. We have an innate understanding of what causes problems in life. Um, and we can be a bit of a leader in service of fixing the problems in life for other people offering not necessarily offering advice but maybe even practical service you know um, here's a casserole because I know that it's been hard this week without any money coming in so here's a practical service um, you know have some food we have this practical orientation to help and to fix when we have the Sun in the sixth house our work life can be very oriented to serve as well because Sun has that general connection to career and the sixth house is our work life. So definitely our how we make our money to pay our own bills is most likely going to be connected to some realm of service, you know, helping people, healing people, fixing problems, shining a light, sun, energy onto issues for people so that they might heal. So there's a great deal of humility that comes with this place but is also a great deal of honor in being able to uplift others once again when we have the sun in the sixth house just like the sun in virgo workaholism can be an issue people who don't know when to stop people who don't know when to take care of themselves and to put themselves first that can be very difficult for sun in the sixth house people even in a good sign like leo or aries it can be difficult to put yourself first um, and honor your needs because there is such a drive for perfection and a drive to work. Because the sun is our identity in the sixth house, again, we're going to naturally identify with the downtrodden and the people who are suffering and the disadvantaged. It can actually mean that we experience more disadvantage, more suffering, more um, lack in our life as well. The sun isn't about like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. I'm so, you know, I have so much empathy for you or compassion for you. That's not the sun's gist at all. It's more that it identifies with those difficulties that people suffer. And so it is driven. It's an action planet. It's a fire planet. It takes the step to make a change and make things better. So in that sense, it can be very empowering towards making change and getting people, getting yourself and getting other people out of the, the difficulties that you've suffered. The sun is creative intelligence and there's this brilliant problem solving ability with the sun in the sixth house. You can see solutions easily, there's creative solutions and creative ideas that you bring to your work and to the, all the difficult scenarios that you face in life. Also, whenever we have a malefic planet in Vedic astrology sitting in a malefic house, they kind of cancel each other out. It means that you have the vitality, the energy, the get up and go, the creative solutions to overcome the difficulties of life. So even though you might experience more than your fair share of hardship, you've got what it takes with the sun in the sixth house to overcome, to, um, you know, to, to come out on top, to be the winner over your adversaries so having a malefic planet in a malefic house is actually beneficial of course this is also the house of uh, going to court as well and so when you go to court you have the great capacity to really shine in court and come out the winner so uh, if you have this placement and somebody's taking you to court you know rest easy knowing that the universe has your back and that you are likely to come out on top of course, that's unless you have some difficult aspects to your son or Saturn's here usurping everything. This is the house of the victim. And with the son here, you might be victimized by son-like people. Your father. Now, as I said, this is where my position is. I was not victimized by my father. 
Um, so this can be, uh, you know, all the things that I'm talking about have variances of manifestation. Something might manifest more strongly than another. These are all possibilities. You may not manifest them all. I just need to reiterate that. But yes, victimization by solar figures, fathers, male figures, um, husbands, bosses, people in sort of kingly roles in our life might victimize you. That said, I wasn't victimized by my father, but certainly I have been by many bosses in the workplace. Interestingly though, these victimization experiences, they can either make us or break us. Often they can drive us to be more of a perfectionist and to achieve at a higher level. So there's something to be said, I guess, for experiencing things like that. One thing though, this is, the sixth house is rather an Upachaya house, which means it gets better with age. So you might have critical bosses or a critical husband or something like that in the early part of your life, but the older that you get, the better things are going to become. The more, um, yeah, the less critical your bosses are going to be or the less critical your husbands might be or yeah, solar figures in your life and the more improved the relationship dynamic with those people will be. Keep in mind though, the sun is an autonomous planet and this is the house of work. So you may end up working for yourself. Hello, <laughs> that's certainly been my journey. And um, why not? You know, this is a house where we are uh, structuring our daily lives and our routines. And the sun here wants to, to set the rules, to set the parameters, to do it his way. So why not? You know, you have capacity to work for yourself here in some realm if you should want to. Now, the sixth house represents health issues. The first house is the house of the body and our vitality. But the sixth house is our issues of, you know, that, that can get us out of balance. Remember, it's the house of things that need perfecting. So uh, here we can see health issues when the sun is here that are connected to what the sun rules. It could be heart problems. Now, this is if the sun is badly aspected or in a very weak sign. We might see, um, you know, heart issues, issues with the back and the spine, which are ruled by the sun as well, and maybe even issues with the immune system also. Uh, but if the sun is in good dignity, if it's powerful, say if it's in exaltation in Aries or if it's in its rulership in Leo, we might uh, that might then explain to us why we have the ability to burn away illness, to overcome illness. And remember, the sun is a malefic planet in a malefic house there is the ability here to, to have victory over illness having this combination so thumbs up this is the house of our diet as well the sixth house is our diet and here with the sun we've got a lot of fire going on we might feel this in our digestion like our digestion might not cope with the hot spicy foods too much heat in the house of our diet so you know hot spicy foods or um, you know red peppers and all that sort of <laughs> stuff you know um, I'm not very good with that sort of thing myself um, having grown up on a very uh, I guess it's a British legacy of diet here in Australia um, but yeah eating too much spicy curry could be very uncomfortable for you and, and it might burn cause indigestion so keep the foods you eat cool wet moist lots of I don't know lots of things like Sloppy foods, I think I said in my last video, but that's the case. You know, sloppy foods, lettuces, fruits, vegetables that contain a lot of water, those kinds of things are very helpful. And drink lots of water as well uh, to maintain your digestion. So in a nutshell, that's what we can expect when we have the sun in our natal chart in either the sign of Virgo or the sixth house. Thanks for joining me for this video, and I'll have another video about the sun in houses and signs for you next week.